Greetings, everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at .NET Fundamentals environments. We'll also go through a quick hands-on lab exercise. So let's get started. So today, we're going to take a look at what are environments. We'll also look at what .NET provides us to complement environments. And within that, looking at how to access that information via dependency injection, as well as leverage that via tags within our presentation code. And throughout it all, we'll take kind of circle everything together and perform a lab and a demo exercise. So first, let's start with what are environments. Well, most of the time in your development pipeline, you're generally going to separate out uh, development into several sections or stages in which you want to promote code through that's maybe not quite validated all the way to where it's ready to go live. Most of the time you're going to have things like a development where most of your software development literally occurs. The software development team's working and they're deploying their code to a development environment for integration. The staging environment oftentimes is where QA is going to perform testing or users are going to perform user acceptance testing prior to having it certified for deployment to production. Sometimes you're going to have more of these. Sometimes you may have just a few. But most of the time, you're going to have a few of these. And Microsoft provides support for those natively. Oftentimes, you're going to want to have to change configuration per environment. You may not have as powerful a system as in development as you do in staging and then prod. So you may want to have a different configuration to take advantage of that uh, different system performance. There's often other times that you'd want to use configuration as well. In addition to configuration, it gives you a way to isolate these changes or a new version of your software from one stage or environment to the other. And honestly, it's all built into .NET, so why not use it? It's already there, so that's what we're looking at today. Most of the information that we're going to be speaking about and looking at in our lab is literally taking from Microsoft documentation. And you can easily find that um, if you go out to Microsoft's site to the docs. Uh, we're in ASP.NET docs, fundamentals, and environments. Most everything we're going to be talking about is right here. And with that said, how do you set that environment, right? Um, if you're in Visual Studio, you can easily set that with a environment parameter in Visual Studio, and we'll look at that in our exercise. Also, if you're going to be a system administrator and setting this at the server level, you can set this up as a system environment variable on a Windows computer, either .NET underscore environment if you're running any type of .NET app, or if you're just running ASP.NET apps, you'll want to run ASP.NET Core, uh, excuse me, ASP net core underscore environment. And like we talked about before, the native ones are going to be development, staging, and production. And you'll see why here in just a moment when we look at a little bit of code. However, you can still have your own custom environment name. So let's take a look at how we'd access this in dependency injection. When we look at our lab exercise a little bit later, uh, it's, it is pretty much a standard file, new ASP.NET MVC project. And when you create those type of projects in the startup CS file, there's a configure method. And in the example that we're going to look at is very similar to this top section here where the iWeb host environment is injected into that particular method. And you can do things with it, and that represents the env variable there. You see the dot is environment, is development, excuse me, the dot is production, and dot is staging. Well, the custom environment here, staging2, that's something that you can add any one of your own custom names, and that's how you would access that. Now, while we're on the topic of startup.cs, if you find yourself in cases of having to do a lot of these kind of if and if statements where you have a certain startup configuration specific to development or specific to staging, there is a way to actually create separate startup classes uh, to be used per environment. And I would uh, recommend that you'd reference the documentation for that. I think it's in the lower section of that re that we referenced. Outside of dependency injection, and that's obviously your code behind, you could access that in you know, uh, virtually any class there in your ASP.NET project, as well as 
uh, within a controller or wherever, or even do an injection on the view if you really wanted to. Uh, but why would you do that when you have an environment tag helper? And that's kind of the beauty here is these kind of represent your if and else statements, right? So think of the first one as if environment equals development, show me this div tag. That's kind of what it is. And the second one is if the environment is not development, then show me this other div tag. So it kind of represents the similar thing what we saw in the previous swarm with the ifs and elses, but you're seeing these here in tags and HTML tags getting rendered. Uh, so that's a great advantage. And we'll look at this a little bit further in our lab. Speaking of which, go ahead and go to uh, github.com slash bradthecoder slash samples.environments and download the repository there, clone that repository, and let's go ahead and open up the solution. Let's take a look at some of the actual configuration settings where you would set the environment. Uh, first, with the, if you're in Visual Studio, you can do on your uh, MVC project, uh, if you go to Properties, uh, and then we go to the Debug tab, um, here, this is where it's set to ASP Core underscore Environment Development. Now, this this will be used uh, for Visual Studio only, but it's very similar to when we set this on the uh, server. So, if you are a server administrator or wanting to set it for the entire computer, uh, you can actually go to a Windows machine, right-click on the Task button there, uh, the Start button, excuse me, and go to System. And then here on the right, go to Advanced System Settings. And then here's our environment variable. So you would set up uh, either the .NET underscore environment or the ASP.NET environment as the uh, new variable, and then either development, staging, or production uh, for the value. And that will set up your environment. Now, based on that, now we'll take a look at what our code's going to do. So we have a couple of examples we're going to be walking through. So let's just kind of do an F5 and uh, see what our example looks like. And if we look at it, uh, similar to if you've seen the configuration uh, uh, video, very similar, we have uh, our environments. This is the link to the documentation we've been following for our lecture portion. Uh, it's available. And then our examples are going to be, we're going to access it for, through the controller using dependency injection. And then we'll use the tag helper to display something on, uh, on this, this Razor page here. So first and foremost, in the controller, we just have a simple message, uh, welcome to the development environment. We go back, uh, our tag helper, and it's just displaying that because we are in development, that qualifies that uh, we included development. And uh, I'll look, we'll should look at the code here in a minute for this. The lab exercises are going to be very similar. We're essentially going to mimic what we do in the examples, but we're going to do these on our own. Uh, so we're basically going to use dependency injection here to uh, display a message that's unique. And then we'll use a tag helper here uh, to display this in our lab. So let's go ahead and look at the code now that we've seen what the app does. Uh, so first off, let's take a look at our controllers. Uh, and we have our example controller first. Um, again, we're going to do some dependency injection here. That was uh, the iWeb host environment we had talked about in our lecture portion. And we're going to inject that in uh, the uh, constructor here. And we've got a couple of controllers. Obviously, our tag helper is just going to return that view. But uh, in the access controller, we're just going to, we have a, just a little simple view here that has a message property that we're going to populate. And in this case, based on that, uh, some of these native options and, and uh, you know, if you ever, you know, don't have this example here, uh, when you do a file new uh, MVC project, uh, if you go into startup in the configure, this is where that default example always exists here. It's doing an injection here, uh, as well as uh, just giving you an example of the environment option. And that's kind of what we're going to exploit uh, in ours, is we're using development and staging. And let's say we wanted to have another different one that was the named instance. So we could have a staging too, uh, which would display this. We're going to use the same message, but you can see it qualifies for both. Uh, production. So staging, development, and production are standards, but you can have any of your own custom ones as well, as we talked about in our uh, lecture portion. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So we're hydrating it there. So let's take a look at both of the uh, views. So that associated view is very simple. Uh, we're essentially going to take that model and populate the message. No big deal. Similarly with our tag helper now, let's take a look at it. So with the tag helper, this is our tag. And we have this include exclude option with comma separated values. So in this case, we have include development. So if it is the development environment, we want to display this message. 
And if it is not the development environment, we want to display that message. And there's this is including three. So it, if since we we saw this on our screen, we had a, a second message here as we saw. And if it's production, we'll see that production message. So as you saw, we were already set up as our development environment. So let's do another example of staging two, as we saw. So staging underscore two. We'll save that and let's launch that. And we'll see our message change on those two examples. So now if we go to it, there's our staging environment as we expected. And on the tag helper, we saw it's not development, right? Excluded, and it's staging two there. So this that's why both of those tags are displayed. Perfect, works great. All right, let's go ahead and just temporarily set that back. And we're gonna begin our lab exercise now. So with the lab exercise, what we wanna do is, is essentially repeat the exact same thing uh, that we saw, but with our own exercise. And instead of having to, to for you guys to see me uh, type all that code, we do actually have another feature branch available to you with that completed exercise in it. So if you look at that exercise, let's take a look first at the controller. So uh, if you looked at it before, um, it didn't have anything. And so we had to, uh, in this case, we're gonna inject our uh, method just like we did in the, ex the example. And we're gonna create our own lab model there. And was, similarly, we have a message. So we're gonna do a message property on all these here, right? And give them all a message. Um, and then, on top of that, we're gonna go ahead and in our view, uh, we have two different exercises, remember? So we're just gonna take that model and display the message, no big deal, right? Um, and then on our tag helper, we wanna just kinda, whatever we can do is for development, staging, and production to show a unique message here uh, that we are in one of those environments one way or the other, right? So in this case, it's real simple, including it. Uh, you can get more advanced, but uh, that's essentially it. So let's take a look at that launched and look at those lab. And remember, we set it back to development, so we should see development messages. All right, access controller, there's our unknown. And our tag helper also didn't work. So let's see where we went wrong. Let's take a look at our environment variable. Ah, we spelled development wrong. Ah, interesting. See, that simple change can make a big difference, right? So if you have your uh, environment set up incorrectly or have a wrong one, that can directly impact. Now, hopefully this would be set on the server and once it's set and validated, you, you don't have to worry about that, but um, perfect example. All right, development environment worked as expected. Development environment worked as expected. All right. I hope you had uh, learned some good things from this environments uh, tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in that comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Here's some other videos you might like.